Sault Ste. Marie, smack dab in the middle of Algoma country. It's best known for the St. Mary's Rapids, but within an hour's drive, there's many tributaries that flow into Lake Superior that hold fish. This week, we explore those tributaries. I'm Bill Spicer, this is the new Fly Fisher. The new fly fisher has been made possible thanks to GoFishingOntario.com Algoma Country Orvis Sporting Traditions Algoma Country the beauty is around every turn as you travel across this wondrous region of Ontario. This area is known for its breathtaking vistas, crystal clear waters, clean air, and friendly people. Surrounded by two of the greatest Great Lakes, Huron and Superior, and dotted with countless lakes and rivers. These magnificent bodies of clear, beautiful water will offer many reasons to stop along the way. This week, I home base in Sault Ste. Marie, and then I travel along the North Shore of Superior in search of migratory rainbow trout, or as they're more commonly known as, steelhead. Our guide for this trip is Rod Trudell of On The Fly Fishing Company. Rod lives in the area and knows the lakes and rivers intimately. With his vast knowledge and easygoing personality, I'm sure I'll have a successful trip. We start out in familiar waters for me in the rapids of the St. Mary's River. We had plans of using two-handed rods and swinging for active fish. But I was visiting the earliest in the year I've ever been. The water was extremely cold and the fish were not active at all. The best thing about Algoma country is you're not far from other tributaries that flow into Lake Superior. All these tributaries have excellent runs of steelhead. Rod told me he knew of an excellent stream about 40 minutes from Sault Ste. Marie. At On The Fly, our services include uh, walk, walk and wade, which could be a half day. It could be a full day of uh, walk and wade in the St. Mary's Rapids. Also, we do walk and wade and half day services on the northern tributaries, such as uh, the Agawa River, Sand River, and the Chippewa River, all up on the northern uh, shores of Lake Superior. As long as it's in Algoma country, we will do a walk and wade within it, as long as we're, we are uh, familiar with the water. After changing locations, it didn't take long before we were into our first steelhead. That one? Fish. Yep, fish. There you go. Good one. That's a fish. Now I know where they are. Uh, all I can do is let the fish do what he wants. Uh, there's not much else I can do other than keep a tight line on him. I'm not trying to horse him. Uh, let him fight the current and uh, tire himself out. I don't know how big he is because this, the current is so heavy here. But it, it, this one definitely hit like a trooper. What I have here is an actual back eddy. I'm casting out to the current and it's bringing it right back in front of me. And the fish are facing opposite to what you fig figure they will be because of the back eddy. And I'm just letting the current take it. It looks like it hit the, the nymph. Okay, that tells me something. That tells me they're, they're feeding up. We got some mayflies probably hatching around here. Head up, head up, and, head up, and there we yes, go. Yes, sir, there we go. There Thank we go. you very much there. And that's on a prince nymph for people at home that see that. Prince nymphs are really a good all-round fly. They're, they can uh, imitate a mayfly or a stonefly. There we go. These little tribs are dotted all along the shores of Lake Superior. 
And if you get Rod as one as your guide, he's, he knows all these intimately. Here, I'll, I'll let this go. I have to let it go this way right now to get the, the current to flow into its gills. And away it goes. And I, I'm going to tell you something. That water is frigid. <laughs> we have uh, a netted glove. This is the same netting as, as, as the nets. They don't harm the fish. They don't take any of the oil off. Very safe to use. All right. <laughs> More steelhead action when we return. got a unique situation here with this waterfalls coming down causing a big back eddy here into this deep deep pool. What I'm doing is I'm casting over to the white water and allowing it to come back into the back eddy into the middle of this pool. These fish are facing actually the same way as the current is over there because of the back eddy. I have a ledge along here whenever you got a ledge fish will hold tight to the ledge to get out of the current. So these are some of the things you can look for in these kind of spill out pools. Whenever possible, keep your cast short and lift the line off the water, keeping a direct link from the tip of your rod to the indicator. This will make it much easier for you to detect a strike. It slowed down quite a bit, and so I needed to change tactics. And what I haven't tried yet was an egg pattern. So what I've done is I've left the egg sucking leech on as my first fly for an attractor and then I'm going to tie on an egg pattern, a cluster egg pattern here that uh, got a little bit of yarn on it there to look like a, an egg sack itself. So I'm doing that, I put the egg down here, hopefully that changes up our luck and they see something different. We have a lot of fish in front of us but if you keep passing the same fly over and over again they'll ignore it because it becomes boring. So I'm going to try switching up something completely different and see what happens. Now I put on an egg pattern. I hadn't tried that yet. And this is about the third drift and I, I hit him. Again, I gotta let him play himself out there. We got so much current here. If I pull too hard and try to horse him, I'm just gonna straighten the hook or break it off. Okay. Now, I'll bring him to you, yep. Matt. He's just about there now. There he is. Want to now, I've got up, such eh? a long lead, I'm gonna have to back up. Yeah. Can you lift him up? Watching myself so I don't trip. There, there you go. Good man. That's a good fish. Good man. All right. Wet my glove. Dang, I'm gonna bite a tail. Oh, he's a feisty one. There you go. Lovely steelhead. Lovely, lovely steelhead. And away it goes. Now, let me make a comment because I've been getting uh, emails on what I call a steelhead. I get the Western people telling me they're not really steelhead. Well, I guess they don't really go to salt water, but they do go to inland seas, which is the Great Lakes. So they're considered steelhead. Uh, biologically, they're the same, but I guess if technically they don't make it to salt water, so we can call them migratory rainbow trout. Switched over to uh, San Juan Worm. Uh, which one he hit? I got two of them on. I got a pink one on and I got a red one on. And this fish has some shoulders. I can hardly move him. He's definitely, when I set the hook, he, he did hard, he hardly moved at all, which indicates a good sized fish. And from what I hear, this river also produces some coaster brook trout. 
Wow. There's not much I can do. I, I, all I can do is, is what I'm doing. Try to tire him out. Come on around here, buddy. Now, for our novices in the audience, this is a migratory rainbow trout, or steelhead as we call them here. And uh, what they do is they, they are born in the river, and then after about a year, they move out to the lake and stay out there and feed and get big. And when it's time to spawn or reproduce, then they come back to the same rivers that they were born in, just like a salmon. And that's when they lay their eggs. This is a real feisty one. I'm, I'm really having a hard time getting his head up. He's got so much current to work with. Oh, there we go. I think we're getting there. Ready? I'm trying to, but I got a tree here. He's going to come back this way. Thank you, sir. That looks good. Look at the colors in this one. Beauty. And it, it just really showed itself a lot better than what, bigger than what it was. I guess it must be the current or something. But boy, I thought this, this fish had some big shoulders on it. But instead of me risking my neck trying to release this fish, we're going to release it right out of the net. We're going to give it time enough that it's, it's going to recoup. And he's already doing, he's moving good. And just There he goes, right there, beautiful. The great thing about Algoma country is they can fit any budget. On this economical trip, I stayed in Sault Ste. Marie at a very modern and affordable hotel. I also hired a guide. I recommend you do the same as local knowledge is paramount in your success. We'll be right back. There are times when the fishing trip is so good, the cameraman gets to change hats and be the fisherman. This is one of those successful trips. Barry Acton, our most senior cameraman, is also an avid and very skilled fly fisherman. I often wondered how it was for him to watch the show host catch all the fish. This time he shows me how it's done and I man the camera. Yeah, wind her up hard, buddy. Okay, Barry's got another chance at it. There we go. That's a, that's a really nice fish. Yeah, that nice fish. Look at that. Nice and tight in it. Look at the colors on it. An unusual spotting for this region, I guess. Nice fish, Barry. Nice fish. Slide him in. Oh, and right away. And away it goes. He's ready to go. The flies that were used on this episode were the blood dot, okay. the white zonker, and the bubblegum worm. Don't forget to include stone flies such as Kaufman stones and prince nymphs. Here we go. Good fish. Looks like it feels like a heavier fish this time. Yeah, I'll get into it late, a little later in the show exactly what I'm doing here because there is a couple of techniques that I have been in using that get you down to where the fish are and I'll explain a little bit later. Looks like it has some weight to it, eh? He does. Some shoulders on her. You ready? Yeah. Get it under him. Get it, quick, quick, quick. Good man. Yeah, it's this a beautiful a nice fish. fish. 
Wow, look at the stripe on it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is outstanding. This is a really nice fish. This is a very thick fish. And look at that. Look at that. Outstanding. Outstanding. Beautiful. Now, this isn't a spotted up, look, look at, but look at the stripe down it and the red cheek. Point him upstream. And away it goes. <laughs> there are some nice fish around here, I'm telling you, some really nice fish. And they are in on fire right now. Um, just a little earlier, uh, my guide took a fish and it actually jumped out of the water, which tells me the water's starting to warm up and the activity is getting greater right now. So this is very exciting. Let's talk about my setup and the technique I'm using in this particular situation. I want you to notice the pool that I'm fishing. We got extremely fast water moving that way and a back eddy. This pool is approximately 10 feet deep. Where are the fish going to be? I'll tell you right now, they're not going to be up in that heavy current near the surface. They're going to be hugging tight on the bottom where all the boulders would be or any kind of crevice that will allow them to get out of the current. Thus, my setup is, my indicator is at least, the indicator right there, is at least 10 and a half feet from my first fly. The flies that I'm using are Prince Nymphs that are beaded. So they're weighted themselves too. Both of them, I got a two fly set up, both of them are the same fly. Then up from that, I have four BB type split shot. That's getting me down to the bottom. It's still not so heavy it's going to grab the bottom, it's, it's floating around natural. What I'm doing is casting over by the white water, like this. I'll get it over there. And I'm lifting the line up off the water. That's extremely important. You got to keep a line toward to your, your nymphs and you'll feel it if a fish hits. You can see that it's moving backwards compared to the, the rest of the current over there. I'm just letting it go anywhere it wants to go. Then I pick it up again, head it back over there, and you'll notice it'll come right back around again. I lift the line up off the water. That's so important. Uh, there's no extra resistance. This, this, the nymphs are gonna flow in what every way the current takes them, and that looks natural to the fish. When you have this much current, when the fish hits, it almost sets the hook itself. You actually feel it before you even see the indicator go down, you'll feel the tug. So it's an actual hit rather than usual indicators, the indicator just moves a bit and you set the hook. This one, you actually feel it. The day was coming to an end and I had such a successful trip, I invited my guide Rod to fish. He was reluctant at first, but with some encouragement, he agreed. Got one on. Now I notice you're using your fingers on the reel itself as yeah. a drag. Yeah. So you gotta set light and... and uh... Yeah, so my drag set lighter. Um, as I noticed, I was losing some fish there, so I lightened off my drag. But I'll use my fingers uh, and I'll just add a little bit of pressure. But in doing so, you got to make sure that you don't clamp down yeah. on it because, like, if you clamp down on it too much, you're gonna pull the fi the fly out of that fish's That's right. mouth. Yeah. That's know? a beginner beginner yeah, mistake. Yeah, you know, uh, it is a beginner mistake. Grab onto mistake. the line to hold on for dear yeah, life. Yeah, something like that, and also something like if you. If, you, if I was to take my rod and I see a lot of guys, like that's good to angle like that. But as soon as my guests, some clients, what they'll do is they'll do it and they'll, they'll put their tip of their rod below the, uh, of their, below the reel. Right. And we lose a lot of fish like that, yeah. especially in turbulent water, right? Right, right. So just trying to get him Let's out see, of that. He should, he should be starting to yeah. slow down a bit. Oh. Got him. Ah, let's get her into calmer water. 
This this fish is actually pretty heavy. It's these fish are not very long, but they're thick. Big big bellies on them. Yeah. Okay, my friend. Yeah. I will grab the glove here. All right, I'm gonna spin around. Spin around towards yeah. the camera. Yeah, get the camera, get my hand wet, and uh, I'll take a look at it. So. Very nice. Very nice, very nice. fish. Nice spots on now it. That's, that, now that's a hen, yeah. Yeah, it's that's very a healthy, healthy and fish. You see right here with the end of the mouth, goes the same with the eye, that, be, that makes it a hen. Yeah. If it's a male, the mouth will be way back here. Yeah, so. Okay. Right on. So I'm going to go and I'll release it into the water here. I'll point it up to the current, get the water going back in the gills, right? Right. Well, this and, one's uh, just he's more ready. full of it already, so he's going to yeah. go, she'll go quick here. And there she, Away goes. she goes. Beauty. Away she goes. Back into the pool there. So thank you, Bill, for being uh, my net guy that yeah. time, eh? <laughs> New fly, new fly fisher net guy. Yeah, <laughs> this is great, great times. Very good, yeah. thank you. Well, our time for this week is up. I really want to thank Rod Trudell for guiding us this week and Algoma Kinawabi for their support. Make sure you visit us on the web at thenewflyfisher.com, also our Facebook and our YouTube channel. From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us, tight lines, and we'll see you later. The new fly fisher has been made possible thanks to GoFishingOntario.com Algoma Country Orvis Sporting Traditions